It's been a interesting week in the college basketball world. And as we get closer to March Madness, you know, there's four weeks remaining until we get to the big dance, until we get to these conference tournaments, until we get to, you know, who's in, who these 68 teams are that are going to be in the, you know, March Madness. And interestingly enough, we have some more things to go through. In fact, the top 16 teams in the bracket you know, the preview bracket, anyway, were revealed this Saturday. And, you know, Gonzaga, Baylor, Michigan, Ohio State, clearly the number one seeds in the country right now. In fact, Michigan came back and played today against Wisconsin. You know, they struggled a little bit. You know, again, they were out for 23 days. No games, COVID ravaging their team, but they sweep Wisconsin. Sweep them off the floor, dusted off in the second half, got adjusted, held Wisconsin strong, you know, kept Wisconsin only 20 points in the second half. That is some damn good stuff right there. Michigan is highly deserving of a number one seed. They do need to play the rest of the Big Ten games, though. Um, hopefully they can. If not, then I mean, hey, it is what it is. But Ohio State further cemented themselves as the number one team, as the number one seed, in my opinion, and it leads to a big time showdown next week between Michigan and Ohio State. And it's going to be fun. I can guarantee you that right now. Man, it's going to be fun. But again, Ohio State beat Maryland and then they beat Indiana. Uh, weirdly enough, Kansas got themselves back in the W column against Oklahoma State. I don't know who else they played this week, but Kansas got a big surprise W. I'm, I'm assuming they'll be back in the rankings. They may not be, though, but who knows. Gonzaga is still Gonzaga, as we have discussed already. They have continued to win. They're 19-0 after this week. They are likely going to be the number one overall seed. I mean, there's just no way. I don't know. Unless Gonzaga loses a game somehow and, you know, because, I mean, the West Coast Conference can be a little tricky. Unless Gonzaga loses a game somehow in the West Coast Conference Tournament, if it is being held, um, I don't know. But there were some dropouts this week as far, um, as far as, you know, teams dropping out. We know Howard had dropped out of the season this week. They just could not, could not. They could not come back to play. They hadn't played since, what, January the 18th, so they just completely opted out. Maine also opted out. Very surprising there. Um, I believe they're in the America East right now as far as basketball goes. So that is a little bit of a blow there. Um, honestly, Maine wasn't really doing anything. You know, they weren't winning games. They were, what, like 2-6, and six, something like that. So, you know, it it... it it hurts, but I mean, hey, it's the right thing to do to shut down your season, you know, right there. But, you know, good to Maine, shut it down, you know, things will be fine. Go ahead, pack up for 2021-2022 for your season. Um, keep, keep going going here. Some other teams that have gotten, you know, you know, gotten some interesting stuff here going on, and that is West Virginia, Texas Tech, Tuesday night. Really interesting stuff there. You know Chris Beard went berserk in that game. And West Virginia sweeps Texas Tech. They swept them. So that is two big W's right there for the Mountaineers. Mountaineers are projected as, I believe, a 3 or 4 seed right now. I want to say they're a 3 seed. I, I, can't remember, I can't remember the brackets that they revealed, you know, for... You know, Region 1, Region 2, Region 3, Region 4, because remember, they're all all the games are in Indianapolis this year. I can't remember exactly what they were, because um, I had watched the I had watched the bracket preview, and then I completely forgot to have it up beside me here. But I do know that Missouri does not belong there. They really don't at all. They, they It's a perplexing team. I know some people were championing Wisconsin as well. I don't think they should be there either, and they weren't there that I know of. Um, keep on going here. Iowa beat Rutgers earlier this week um, as well. You know, again, interesting stuff there. But again, I question Missouri because they lost to Ole Miss. You know, they lost to a bad, we're talking real bad, 
How do you lose 80 to 59 like this? You know, how do you lose like that? I question the integrity, you know, of putting Missouri as a top 16 team. You know, right now, they don't feel like a top 16. They don't feel like a top seed, a top four seed. That's what I meant to say. They don't feel like a top four seed right now. They're too inconsistent. In fact, I'd say Florida State or Creighton would better fit that spot. And Creighton got themselves big time W's this week. Georgetown, again, Georgetown is tricky. I said this last Monday. Georgetown is tricky. Creighton got through it. Then they had to go up against Bilova. Beat them down bad. I ended up not watching that game, um, that Craig Villanova game I was going to, but I ended up, you know, it's snowing out here, so I ended up not watching it, and I was not feeling the greatest that Saturday, you know, or rather, yeah, yesterday. I wasn't feeling the greatest yesterday, so I ended up not watching it, you know, after I watched on Longhorns beat up on TCU. By the way, Longhorns projected as a 3C right now, and I think that's pretty fair. Virginia also projected as three seed. Pretty fair for them too. You know, they, they haven't had it all together completely. But again, Wisconsin's a bit too inconsistent for me. I don't think that they should be long, you know, in that you know, that for that four seed. Don't think Missouri should either. Now Illinois is creeping up. They are creeping up big time. Illinois is a two seed right now. And that is just a testament to how good this team is. Again, they've been through the gauntlet. They have been through the gauntlet that is the Big Ten. They have been through the gauntlet of the non-conference schedule, you know, that, you know, had had Baylor on it. They've been through a big-time non-conference game like that. But, again, I want to say Florida State should be a top-14 if they don't get that top-4 Z. In fact, maybe USC, too, because they've been kind of under the radar for the past few weeks, too. I'm going to eventually get a chance to watch them. Um, hopefully sometime this week, maybe next week, I don't know. Um, but they're under the radar too. They got some W's. Again, one of them was against Washington though. So that doesn't really matter at all. Um, what else do I need to complain about? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. What is this? Why do we have a top 15 matchup in Oklahoma, West Virginia? On, you know, ESPN Plus, it is a top fifteen matchup. Why are we putting, you know, I get, I get Loyola Drake was at that same time, but I know there was a, I know there was something else, you know, somewhere throughout the day where it was like, no, this should not be, you know, on at this time on ESPN or ESPN two or ESPN U or something like that. This has just been a bad TV deal all around for the Big Twelve. There's no way a good a damn good college basketball conference like this has games on ESPN Plus. Where is our Big 12 network? Again, where? Where is that? We could have had, we could have had, you know, Longhorns play TCU at 2 o'clock or something like that, you know, if the Longhorn network didn't exist. I, that's the, that's the only, that's the real biggest drug negative of, you know, being a Texas fan. The Longhorn network existing. It does not need to exist. I said this months ago. I, I've said this throughout my YouTube career, and you know, before that, the Longhorn Network does not need to exist. Somehow, find a way to terminate that ASAP. Find a way to get Texas the money back. ESPN's already overpaying for stuff anyway. You know, like Monday Night Football, overpaying for that. They don't. They don't need all. They don't. My Longhorns don't need this. Hurry up and find a way to get some more games, you know, on an actual TV. I do. I never like streaming services. I think they're kind of hogwash. Now look at what happened. Look at where we are, 2021. Look at where we are, where there isn't like nine streaming services that you have to sign up for. That will be like sixty dollars. You know, you have to sign up for every one of them to get something that you want, and that's like six hundred dollars right there. Sixty to six hundred dollars right there, up front. Give me your money. Netflix, give me your money. You know, HBO Max, they'll be saying, give me your money. Hulu, money, where's my money at? You know, all of them. All of them have something that people want, you know, that people need, you know, for their sports consumption. But don't nobody want no ESPN Plus. I don't want it. I don't want that. But, I mean, just, you know, I'm going off on a tangent here. 
you know, and then Missouri, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, off the rails right now because of how angry, you know, I am at this Big 12 TV deal. We need to renegotiate it ASAP. We better renegotiate it soon, I hope. You know, get, get it together. But what was I going to say about Missouri before? Yeah, too inconsistent. Don't think they belong as a number four seed. You know, again, they lost to Ole Miss. Then they lost to Arkansas yesterday. It doesn't make any sense. Why? I hope this team's removed from a number four line. Uh, I, I don't remember which region they're in. I think they're in the Baylor region. You know, it might be the Baylor region. I'm not sure. But I don't think Missouri belongs, you know, at a four seed right now. That's the main thing. Uh, everybody else is fine. Texas is fine. Baylor, Oklahoma. You know, I think, you know, s some people have said that USC deserves a spot, you know, at a, you know, top top 16, you know, top four seed. I keep saying top 16. I mean top four seed. Um, I think, you know, USC could get in that conversation. But we'll talk about all that tomorrow, I believe. I'll go, I'll go over it again tomorrow and everything like that. Um, and also, Drake may be coming back in the top 25. They beat up on Loyola, Chicago yesterday, or rather this afternoon, excuse me, after getting beat up the day before by Loyola. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got to say here. There's not, there's not much else for me to talk about. I mean, there is, you know, some intrigue with some SEC teams too, you know, like, who's getting in for the SEC. I don't think there's too many implications there as to who's getting in, you know, from the SEC. I'll, I'll have, I might have some notes for that as far as who's getting in and who's not. Uh, the, ranking, the next set of rankings should come out tomorrow, and we should have some big things ahead because we have some big games ahead this week, especially Texas, Oklahoma Part 2. Um, also trying to get back, you know, into the ACC, but it's been hard to watch the ACC this year when everybody in the ACC is down. Like this conference has been down bad, uh, and, and you know the Big Ten, Big Twelve, and pot, and mostly the Big E. Well, yeah, mostly the Big Twelve, the Big East have been the two conferences that have been head and shoulders above the others this year. But yeah. Yeah, that should pretty much do it. I know there's some other things going on too this week. But um, yeah, we'll talk about all that stuff tomorrow. We'll talk about it all tomorrow. See ya, everybody.